So finally, we have a, a simplified a problem in which we have just to study the problem what is relevant is the geometry of the cross section in x and y, in x1, x2, and in x3 we forget. The actions are always contained in the plane of the analysis, both the, the tractions, the body forces, the prescriptions in terms of gamma u are also prescriptions on ux and ui, and that is the situation. And uh, the problem then simplifies. For instance, what happens with the Cauchy equations of motion? You know, the Cauchy equation of motions with are three equations involving sigma x, tau xy, tau xz, all the stresses. But there is a number of components that drop just by construction because of the hypothesis that the displacements are only uh, dependent on x, y, and displacement z is zero. And we have just this part of the equation equal to this part of the acceleration. And the other equations, the other terms drop. The constitutive equation is just a, an equation that relates the three relevant stresses, the three in-plane stresses, with the three in-plane strains in terms of a matrix that depends on if we are in plane stress or in plane strain. That will be represented in that way. So a fictitious uh, Young modulus and uh, Poisson ratio, which is equal to the real one in plane stress, or which is corrected in that way for plane strain. Okay? The, the geometrical equation also, also only involves three equations, the three strains as function of the two different from zero displacements. So finally, we have a set of two unknowns in terms of displacements, the two displacements, three unknowns in terms of strains, and three unknowns in terms of stresses. With how many equations? Three geometrical equations, three stress equations, and three constitutive equations. So we have uh, eight equations and eight unknowns. Okay? So the boundary equations are always the same, but now just in the 2D case. So we have boundary equations in gamma u in terms of the displacements, or gamma equations in gamma sigma in terms of the normal. But when I, when I talk of the normal, I mean the normal, the in-plane normal to the section of analysis. So the normal has no component in the direction z, so there is no component z considered here, and the stress tensor only has sigma x, sigma y, and tau xy, and it's symmetric. Okay? The initial conditions are also given in terms of the displacements x and y, and the initial relative velocity that has only two components, bx and by. So this is a system of eight unknowns and eight equations, which after solving these equations, we have the displacements, the three strains, the three stresses, and in addition, a posteriori, we can, in plain straits, determine what is the EZ, the, the displacement epsilon Z, the out of plane strain, which is non zero, or in plane strain, we can determine, that is very important to determine, the out of plane stress, which can be obtained just by summing these two, sigma x and sigma y, and multiplying by the portion ratio. Okay?